astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds guidance. This is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, One, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes. Hello folks, well uh, as you could probably tell we're having some technical problems tonight so Andy say hello. <laughs> hello everyone, now you might not recognise oh, that singer dear. in that live wire there, ACDC song, that was uh, me. Uh, some weird band Yeah, you used to sing yeah. in that band, um, just because we're <laughs> wondering about copyright, that's all, thought we'd put yeah. me on. Yeah. They're not bad actually. I think it's pretty good. It's a good recording. That a good they were yeah. a good band. They were a good band. Yeah. Let, let me uh, tell folks what's happening tonight. Um, the, the there has been an issue with the the software that we use uh, to stream out to all the channels, and the the technical guys have been tweaking about for the last hour and they can't sort it. We thought we might get away with that first video. It, it was a bit ropey, so my apologies. So we're going to have to go tonight without the video section, without the music section at the end, guys. Uh, but we thought we'd go ahead anyway, so I hope you don't mind. Uh, what do you think about that, Andy? Does that sound all right? Well, no, we'll just give up now. <laughs> well, uh, unlike last week when I was on the the alcohol free beer, mate, I'm on the I'm on the Guinness tonight, and it could, it's mm. always dodgy doing it in live camera, isn't it? My God, I nearly made a mess there. Um, I'm on the Guinness well, tonight, folks. Uh, I think I deserve it after the last hour I've just had. If you ever done a uh, live streaming or anything online, uh, you know how much of a pain in the arse it is when it doesn't work. Uh, 
So it's a shame because we had quite a good fun thing happening tonight, but which, which we kind of do. But anyway, hello. Uh, thanks very much for saying hello. You can obviously hear us. That's good. Thanks, folks. Thanks, Chris. Um, so tonight, uh, in a slightly different, uh, as in winging it in the last 10 minutes, um, we're going to go through some of the feedback you've given us. Uh, and I've got a few things I want to report back on. And I've had some amazing stuff happened on Facebook, which Andy will tell you about right now. Andy, what's been happening on the, the Facebook group? people posting stuff um, <laughs> we had uh, this week we had about we had we just had one new person uh, join up so we've got 98 people this week so that's pretty good that's a good uh turn well, for people uh, coming in how many members are there now uh there'll be eight thousand just over eight thousand yeah, right which is amazing that's utterly yeah. ridiculous um yeah. if you look at um it's always dodgy to talk about football teams, but it, we're, we're, at, we're at the sort of Hibs level <laughs> with the SPL. Yeah. Uh, that, that's how many members we've got in this Facebook group. It's unbelievable. Um, and how many active members was it? Uh, last week there was about four, on average, 4,000. I mean, guys, that... So there's, yeah. there's more people active on the Facebook group than the Apollo held. It's a sellout. It's a sellout, yeah. yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, that was that was uh, the amount of seats. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. We want to talk about that another time, actually. Yeah. I think some of it's... Uh, well, there's some Pinot Art. Pinot Art. Pinot Art. Pinot Art. Somebody's on the yeah. Pinot Art. Art, Art. Yeah. I, can't, I can't speak tonight. Uh, well, we've opened the door and let people in there. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk about matchboxes going out the loo, out the loo windows yeah. another time, maybe. Uh, hi, Ian. Thanks very much. Yeah, you're right. That's three Apollos we're filling now, which is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So in terms of tonight, what we're going to do, um, and this is going to be, I'll, I'll tell you what the structure was going to be, and there's, there's two bits that we kind of do because of the technology. We're going to start in a minute uh, coming back to you when there's been so many suggestions for what we call this. And I'm going to share some of them with you. We've not chosen one yet because they're, they're all pretty good. So we, we, we might do, a, I don't know, Andy, if you could do a poll on Facebook, is that possible? Oh, yeah, anything's possible. Probably is, we need to think about that. But I think we'll, we'll maybe ask you to vote on it because there's, there's so many of them <clears> that are pretty funny and pretty good. So so we'll do that. We're then going to show you some stuff that has come through the through Facebook and through um, just direct contact, actually, on the, the website, the, the email, sorry, that's on the screen just now. A couple of things there that are, that are really interesting and we're quite surprised by them, quite rare things. Then we're going to have a quick chat about, you know, who played this week, uh, which we said we would, we would do every week anyway, which is a good idea. We'll talk about the venue uh, tonight and uh, I'm going to ask you about what, what you used to call it. So get your minds thinking. You can put that in the comments if you... If you I mean, I, I, we used to call it the appalling... Uh, I don't know if that is a general uh, other name for it, but that's what we used to call it. But we're then going to show you a film, and I'll not tell you what it was because we'll use it next week. Um, but we're going to show you a film that's uh, about three or four minutes late, uh, long as somebody at the Apollo, which is really cool. But we'll do that next week. And then normally what we would do is have a song of the week and then we'd finish. But we had the other thing that, that um, I'm just going to talk about now rather than waiting to the end is we, were, we put about five people suggested that because of lockdown it might be quite cool if we did a, a zoom version of this so everybody could just chat to each other and get to know each other um and i think that's a great idea um so i've actually bought a zoom license so we can have 200 people um in the in the zoom i mean i'm not imagining that many will come on but even if 10 or 15 are coming on we need we need the license so i've done that uh, we won't do it this week um but from next week we'll have an after show uh, zoom session as well just to help folk have a, a bit of a drink and a chat and uh, meet some people, they might meet some old mates or whatever. So I hope that's okay. As I say, it was quite a lot of you said you'd like it. So um, we're going to have a go at it and just see how it goes. So thanks for uh, 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 thinking that was a decent idea. I'll try and name the people next week. Um, normally I would do it now, but the tech's not working, so I can't. Uh, Steve Hall says, hi guys, uh, back from Holland. Good to see you back, mate. Thank you. Didn't put you off last week then. So, all right. So, um, in terms of where we started, have I covered everything there, Andy? Yep. Seems yeah. Good. All right. Yeah, good. In terms of naming the show, right? Um, this is uh, I'm going to tell you some of these because they're quite they're quite good. Um, we've got um, right. 
John McCormack sent to John, if you're there, hi John, how you doing mate? Thanks for getting in, uh, dropping us a line. John suggested it was for the after show thing and John said we should call it Oot <laughs> uh, after the famous uh, bouncers at the Apollo. Now I think there's a few bouncers watching so uh, they might have used another word in front of the Oot but that's quite a good name, I quite like that. I think, maybe, I call think it, you should maybe call it Hockledoot. Say again? Hockledoot. Hockledoot. Yeah. I've not heard that for years. Hockled. Yeah. Hockled. Yeah. Well, thanks, Steve. That's, that's nice that you say that. Hockled it. This th thing is, I've been on missionary work on England for the last 20 years, and hockled is not a word that they would understand. <laughs> not that there's many folk in, but yeah. uh, uh, hi, Jackie. Nice, nice to see you. Um, but that's maybe, hi, hockled it. I'll take a note of that, mate. Now, here's a few from John Henry. Hi, John. John's been really active in the group. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, I think he was as surprised as everybody else how many people were responding to his notes. So John sent some ideas. Um, view from the gods makes sense. Yeah. This one's really clever, but I don't know if it's a name for a show, but it might be the name for something else, John. The tide is high, but the stage was higher. <laughs> I quite like that. It's quite good. Yeah. Um, the original bouncy castle. Mm -hmm. The sticky carpet society. I quite like that. Yeah. And uh, and then there's a I think it's a suspect this is a Leonard Skinner inspired one. What's that smell? Mm. <laughs> quite, I'm not sure about that. I quite like it. So that's that lot. Then I've got that. There's a few folks said this. The Apollo stage door. Among them was uh, Kevin uh, McCallum. Uh, the Apollo yeah. stage door, which I don't think is a bad idea. And then Aidan from Dumfriesshire um, said that he thought the structure was a bit like off the ball, you know, in BBC, BBC Radio Scotland. And someone else said, well, why not call it Off the Hall? Um, I'm not sure that's right, but I think it's a good idea. So this is why I'm, I'm not committing to anything at the moment. And the one that came up, six different people said, call it Apollo Memories Live. Now, I know there's a bit of an issue with that because there's another Apollo Memories stream somewhere, or at least it's a radio show, I think. So we might have an issue with that, but it's a decent it's a decent enough name. So, so they were the main ones. Um, if you have any more, stick them in the comments uh, so we can see them later. Because remember, this saves on to Facebook, um, and Andy and I can have a look at it later. So that was great. Thanks. Uh, I'm really chuffed. And remember, uh, the one that gets chosen, whether we choose it from a a, a poll or we choose it from a, a lottery or whatever, will win a copy of the second edition of the Apollo Memories book uh, that we wrote uh, with uh, Martin Kilty. So um, I hope I hope that uh, somebody gets that in the next couple of weeks. It's quite exciting. So thank you. Any other ideas? Send them in. Please send them in. Either follow the email on the screen, which I'll put back right now. Um, there you go, or uh, just put it in the, as I say, put it in the comments, and that'd be cool. Anything to add to that, mate? No, no. I think I've covered everything there, eh? Right. So the next thing, this this is quite. Uh, there's been some quite amazing things happened this week. Getting a hundred new members in a week for a Facebook group. How long's the Facebook group been going, Andy? Oh. Thirteen, four, thirteen. Thirteen years. Has Facebook been yeah. going that long? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I tell you what, alcohol full beer is a lot better than alcohol free beer. You notice if you watched Fish on Friday tonight, he started off with a uh, with a er Erdinger, but halfway through the show, he was on the he was on the wine. So I can I can understand that. Um, hey, hey, hey. Look. Yeah. Someone just someone just suggested on Facebook. Uh, what about walls that sweat? That's Steve oh, Hall. Hi, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite. I'll write that down, Steve. That's quite good. That that. I remember going to um, other venues. Like, do you remember the Heather Bar in Wisha or uh, some of the, the the clubs in in Glasgow, where it literally used to rain with the sweat? Do you remember that? Um, I don't, don't know if I ever experienced rain. Well, I experienced real rain. At the Apollo, but I don't know if I've ever said the sweat, but that's that's quite good. Thanks, mate. We'll take a note of that as well. I suspect we're going to have to do a poll here, Andy, because there's so many of them that are pretty good. Yeah. I think we're going to have to do a poll, mate. I'm yeah. going to have to do a poll. All right. Right. So back back to the the actual Facebook group and the things that have happened this week. And this this is going to be a regular thing because the, the group is so active. Um, not everybody that watches those in in Facebook because quite a lot of folk have come away from Facebook for, for, for reasonable reasons. So uh, some of it you might have seen some before, but other bits you, you probably missed. Um, um, and there's been a few rare finds this week, but one of them has been incredibly rare. And 
this, and I, I think the pictures are working, so I can actually show you this, which is really good. Um, this came in this week, and I'll, if you just have a look at what that is, this is the the famous trophy that, uh, I mean, it's cheap rubbish, but Frank Lynch and co used to give the bands a trophy if they sold the gig out. And it, it, there's two or three versions of this. And if you see, there's one, the famous one with Blondie. I think I've got that picture actually here. Oh, no, I don't. Um, there's a famous one with Blondie holding one, but this is one of ECDC's ones. And uh, this this guy, and I've, I've actually just had a converse, conversation with a guy, um, and I'm going to get the whole story for us. It's a fella called uh, Bryce Redburn, who was over, over on the Bon Scott uh, tribute Facebook page. And he was given this by Bon and Malcolm. Can you people believe that? And it was actually our, our very own Jim Grennan, uh, who, who's in here regularly, um, who spotted it. And then I got in touch with Bryce uh, today. And I noticed on Bryce's profile, I don't know if you're in Bryce, but there's lots of photographs with ACDC. So I think we've got a man here that knows the band. Um, but they were given, they gave him that. Isn't that amazing? They're looking around in, in Glasgow for the last 40 odd years. Um, these trophies are, uh, as I mentioned last week, there, there are bands and certainly Frank Lynch was so keen to get hold of one of these trophies. And they're cheap rubbish. They're just from the that shop Tom Russell used to run, you know, the sort of the sports shop type trophies. Just rubbish, but they are they're really sought after. I'm not sure ACDC would be too bothered, but I think the fact they got that from Bon and Malcolm is pretty amazing. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty amazing. What's everybody saying here? After the gig, when the when you left, the walls were sweating. Yeah, yeah, I, I can believe that. I can believe that, Steve. I can believe that. Isn't that an amazing thing to for us to find? Um, that's been kicking around Glasgow for forty odd years, and it's just popped out of the ether. Quite incredible. So that's that's one of the things that happened this week that I thought was amazing. Um, and the other thing that 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 was said in the communication between us on this was that people didn't know that there was a book about the Apollo. They didn't know there'd been a musical. They didn't know about the DVD that would be made. Um, the, you know, it's, it's incredible how, despite the fact we've been doing this for 17 years, that there's still people out there uh, that don't know about yeah. uh, what, what we've been doing. Yeah, it's amazing. You see more of that than I do, I think, Andy, with the, with the website, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I got a lot of stuff like saying, oh, I've just found your website. Um, well, <clears throat> good. 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 But a lot, you know, like a lot of people are. I don't understand if you're looking for something for the Apollo that you'd ne you'd never come across the site. So no, exactly. Yeah, but it's it's, it's great. I mean, I love it because yeah. the, the thing I like, mate, is when you get this person who finds the finds the website or finds the Facebook group, and they send us apps. And I've done it. I've, I'm not saying that this is not a bad thing. It's a great thing. They send us gushing text saying, "Oh, that's amazing! I saw this band, this band, this band, this band, this band." And of course, everybody yeah. in the group is going, yeah, we have had that conversation <laughs> before. But for them, yeah. it's really cool. And they've suddenly got this yeah. memory. Um, so I hope, I hope uh, we must never put them off, those people, because it's brilliant. No, no. Yeah. Well, it's, it's absolutely just, brilliant. It's the same as if you've got anything new. If you find something new, you want to show, tell people what you've done and what you've seen. That's all it is. Yes. Apollo, Apollo Breed. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> What's that about? Apollo Creed. Oh, ah, right, good. That's excellent. Well, I quite like that. I'm going to write that down. I like that one. Well, or is it Apollo Breed, like Apollo Bread? bread. Alan, what do you mean by Apollo Breed for the name of the show? Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, I think he, he, he means us. Ah, uh, he's meaning the boxing. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, mate. Mm. All yeah. right. Okay. That's good. I like that. So the other thing we got this week, now this was, um, uh, let me just show you this. This is stuff that I, I wrote the guy's name down, actually. Aidan from uh, Dumfriesshire. I hope you're there, Aidan. Uh, Aidan very kindly sent us his tickets, as did another couple of people. These are these are, these are the, the new ones we got. And um, John McLaughlin, I think most of us have heard of. Um, but Aidan was saying it was very quiet. So these tickets are quite hard to get, uh, get your hands on. There's a really old one there from, from ELP. Uh, that we'd never seen before. In the middle, uh, Jim Grennan sent uh, me this picture on uh, Messenger. Uh, that's one of the old badges. I quite, I quite like that badge. <laughs> and it's also, it's it's pinned Jim, isn't it, to a, a towel that he got, that he caught from the band, the French band Triumph. 
that they threw into the audience. <laughs> so, Canadian. They're Canadian. Yeah. They're Canadian. Oh, yeah. French Canadian, yeah. yeah. But um and then Rick Raymond. I never knew Rick Raymond played near the end. Well I probably did, Andy, but Rick Rick Raymond obviously played near the end of the Apollo there. Very and then, near. Yeah. yeah, very, very near. And um and then the final one that we got from Aiden was this one about a band called War. I, I don't think I'd ever heard of War. And then Blood, Sweat and Tears. It was a joint uh, headline thing. And again, there wasn't many people there. But uh, so these are quite rare, these ones. This is great. So Aiden, thank you very much, mate. We really appreciate it. Um, it's great to, to to see these things coming through because um, I know people really appreciate it when they go into the website. And uh, you would not believe, well, you would probably believe the number of journalists and and people writing books that come to us and ask us if we can use the tickets so we can use the stories. It's quite incredible, quite incredible. So anyway, I hope you found that. I thought that was bright this week. Thanks, guys. It's uh, really, really cool um, that there's uh, so many of you contributing and so many of you bringing stories that we've never seen before. So it's really appreciated. It's magic. So, Andy, who was playing this week, mate, at the Apollo? Can you remember? Who was playing this week? Well, uh... I can't actually yeah. remember this gig because on the 19th of the 11th, 1983, um, Ozzy Osbourne played. Oh, and that? We were at that and yeah. Heavy Petting were there. Hear me. They were there too. So I remember that. That was a good gig. Um, who else was there? Um, uh, the night before that, or two nights, be three nights before that, that was, uh, was Public Image Limited. Um Take you back to 1940, oh, fuck. 1945, <laughs> the Choral and Orchestral Union of Glasgow played um, on the 18th of, of uh, November. And I think, uh, I think the members, uh, Bobby Poole, Robert Poole, Bobby right. Poole, I think he sent me lots of stuff before about, he sent me, uh, I think it was him, he sent me some scans of... Uh, programs from that all right or he, he sent me some images of a program of the playlist not the playlist but you know like the running order for that gig not gig it was a orchestra yeah sure so it must have been yeah. quite a show that would have uh, been a good show yeah. and there was a there's a what's the name uh i was looking at the list and it said that humble pie played this like it was last week this week um uh, i was wondering if that was the gig that they recorded their live, their side four of their album, uh, Eat It, I think it's called. It was a live album. Four of the, that last that last side was recorded at the Apollo. But I wasn't sure. Maybe right. one of the members could tell me if that's correct. I wasn't sure if it was that. Right. That concert or the concert the year later. Yeah. So, I kind of miss it. You know, I, I miss Humble Pie. I still don't really know their music very well. That's embarrassing, yeah. really. Yeah, it is embarrassing. They're really good. <laughs> good band. <laughs> good rock band. Good rock. So R and B. Uh, R and B. Rock band. Yeah, they're a good band. Really good. Didn't yeah. they have that Glenn Hughes guys anywhere near it? Did they? No. Yeah, much alike him. Um... No. No. <laughs> no man. Rock. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. He's sorry, a good singer. Sorry. Yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Back don't, to don't back, you, back, don't, that that gig. Look. Don't push your agenda on other people, mate. I'm not going to push my agenda, sorry. Steve Hall saying he was there in 1945. Steve, do you know All my right. dad? <laughs> <laughs> my dad's wee Les Ficker. Look, do you know him? <laughs> if you knew him, you would know him. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, that, oh, that yeah, all actually, week. <laughs> actually, Leonard Skinner played as well this week too. Did they? Brilliant. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to have seen Skinner at the Apollo. I never saw them there. And I, I saw them at the last... Yeah, I think they supported Golden Earring, so they weren't even headlining. Oh my gosh, that would have been brilliant. Yeah. Have been brilliant. Yeah, that would have been We've got a, a bit of a story about Leonard Skinner, guys, because uh, we had a when we first launched the website. Um, there's a lot of bands got in touch with us, and I, I wouldn't be surprised <clears> if they get back in touch with us, to be honest, because they, they're all really keen on the Apollo. But Skinner sent me a, a parcel, like a quite a big parcel, and it had like loads of programs and pictures and all the rest of it and it had a t-shirt in it and it was wrapped up in a, in a sort of like a like a loo roll and then um, i opened it up and it was a white i've got I've still got the t-shirt it's got a few holes in it but i still it still fits me so i'll, I'll put it on one week it's a bit knackered but I'll, I'll put it on it's 20 years old but so i unrolled it and in the middle of it was the biggest cigar 
honestly, massive cigar uh, that, that I got for the band, and I got a really nice wee note for them saying, well done and keeping the memories of the Apollo going. So Leonard Skinner loved it. Um, that, that's a, amazing that they were... How many years ago is that? 40 years ago? It's ridiculous. Um, uh, yeah. Um, that uh, that uh, Aussie gig, was that the one when he shaved his head? Do you um, remember that, folks? He had uh, got a razor and he shaved it and it was all cut. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can't. Can I remember? No. But I remember heavy petting quite. I mean, they nearly made it, didn't they? Um, yeah, they were close. They got really, there was them and Bon Jovi <clears> were <throat> kind of at it at the same time, weren't they? And uh, Bon Jovi made it and heavy petting. Never, but they've reformed, haven't they? In yeah, fact, I think they played it. Is it Winterstorm? You know that gig that every year there is up north? Um, I think they were pretty good. I heard um, a lot of folks saying they were pretty good. I was thought his voice was a bit squeaky. But, um, but he's a good wee singer, though. <laughs> People. Well, I don't yeah, care. I don't care. I don't care. If folks don't agree, they can tell me I'm talking pish. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> But I quite liked them. I remember they did the live video and they got everybody to go to, to the to the, the, the gig and the play. You were in that, were you know? Did they go to Kelvin Grove? Kelvin Grove, aye. And they did a, oh, they did go to, well, they turned up at Kelvin Grove and then uh was that the year bon, John Bon Jovi turned up? No, that was Glasgow, wasn't it? That was yeah. Glasgow, John Bon Jovi walked on. But uh yeah. I, I thought Heavy Petting were a fine wee band, actually. I thought they were all right. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're good. What's the guy Punky, that's right, Punky Mendoza, that was his name, wasn't yeah. it? He he was all right, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. so who else? Humble Pie, Aussie. Who else was it? Pil. Oh, yeah, Pil. There's uh, uh, Public Image Limited. Uh, That's quite uh, a famous one as well. Yeah, your favourite, Chris De Bar was oh, on. Jesus. <laughs> you know, I'd, 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 I'd Rick Wakeman again. Oh, God, Rick Wakeman again. Saxon. Right. I, 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 I'd have got him. What? Yeah. Saxon. They supported Motorhead, so Motorhead played. So ah, there'd probably be right, a few yeah. uh, viewers went to that. Yes, thing. probably not been too. Would have been a bit rock here, aren't we? But uh, somebody, yeah. <laughs> somebody just said, um, "AI Heavy Pet and lost it when they did their Eurovision song." God, I remember that. Was what was that called? Was it Romeo or something? Wasn't it? It was called Romeo. Romeo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Mate. Uh, so I'm going to get in trouble with the heavy have you, head. Have you, yeah. have, you been, have you been a Eurovision Song Contest entrant? No. I have no. not. I have not. Well, there you um, go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's well, Trevor's just saying, uh, sorry, Trevor's saying, uh, Winter Storm's not up north, but Troon in Ayrshire. Mate, that's up north for me. You know, come on. I'm living in the Cotswolds these days. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to do that. Too, yeah. Brilliant I festival. Think- I've yeah. heard I've heard loads of folks saying it's a great festival. I'd love to go to it. I go to Bonfest every year. Well, when it's when there's not COVID, I've never got to Winter Storm. But Andy and I were at school with uh, uh, Paul McManus, the drummer with Gun, and uh, he was saying that Winter Storm they played there last year, and uh, he said it was one of the best gigs he's ever been. So he rates it as well. So it's I think it's quite a quite a cool uh, quite a cool gig, quite a cool gig. I'd love to go to it. The um. The PIL concert, I don't know if anyone was at that, but I think it's quite well known because it was really short. I think it was it was less than an hour and there was a bit of a barney at the end. I remember that. I think uh, a guy we were at school we was into them and I remember him going to it and being really peed off because uh, it was such a short one. I don't know if anyone remembers it, but um, Aussie was brilliant, wasn't he? Andy, do you remember that? Yeah, he was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so is that it for last time? Uh, also, who else? Oh, Judas Priest played this yeah. week too. Right. Um, what year? That was Judas Priest played in 81, so a wee bit before our time. No, that was my first gig, mate. Oh, was it? That was oh. my first gig at the Apollo, yeah. There was a German band, you remember, Accept? Accept, yeah. Yeah. How, and, did, uh, how did that go? Well, it was, it, actually, I'll be honest, the first gig I was ever at was at, um, oh god, what was it? It was in Bridlington Ice Rink, and I was with the Boys Brigade and a band that some of you'll remember. Bad Manners were on it in the Ice Rink. That was actually the first gig I was at. Um, wasn't the, best, wasn't the best gig. Um, but no, I was in the second row of the circle. Um, and uh, I remember it because it was, uh, oh, we've got more Sydney people in here. That's Anne. Hi, Anne. 
Um, Hi, and, and Andy's not far away for you. He's in Sydney as well. He's looking out the window for you. Yeah, but I remember going to that gig, um, and I remember Accept coming on, and I had, you remember the big heavy curtain they used to have at the, uh, on the stage? Well, they kind of played right at the very front of the stage. I, I don't even know if they... I can't even remember. Somebody will tell me. But I don't remember if, if the curtain was even taken up. And Accept were... I didn't mind them, actually, but they were, they were really loud, and I'd never been to a proper gig before. And I was like, oh, my God. Then on came Judas Priest. Jesus Christ. I mean, they, they went absolutely ballistic. Uh, they were brilliant. And... Uh, to this day, I still I mean, I think you always think your first concert's quite a big one, don't you? Uh, yeah. I, I thought it was magic. Um, I've seen them soon uh, since, and they were they were quite good. But they, that that night, they were absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. Remember that? Uh, what's that song? Green Men Alicia that they do. You know the cover version that they do. Yeah, that was just the big man came on with the big motorbike onto the stage. It was uh, it was brilliant. Well, here we go, Andy. They're asking us what we think of the new ACDC album. <laughs> like it. <laughs> yeah. It's a really good question, like Chris, because one of the things that we, we, we're also going to do, uh, kind of do it this week, but we're going to actually talk about bands that are still going and bands that maybe sound like or are in the same genres, if you like, as some of these bands. And Andy and I were tuning the flat last night about two in the morning whilst I was drinking wine and he was probably drinking coffee again uh, about the new ACDC album. I think it's pretty damn good, actually. Um, I don't like the the last song, the innuendo one, but the rest of it is brilliant. And I think there's at least two, what's that song, Andy? The one, the, the, there's one song sounds like a Bon Scott song. It really does. You know, the one, the slow burn one, but it's just ACDC and it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. I love it. I, I hope we get to see them one one more time. Uh, saw them at the Apollo three times, I think. And uh, again, we were talking about that last night. You know, you, you used to be able to see ACDC in, small venues like the Playhouse and the Apollo. You have no chance now, you know, seeing them and it'll be Hamden if you're lucky. Um, what's this? Yes. Yeah. Steve Hall saying, I remember my first gig and the volume was like bloody hell. Yeah, I know. I, it took some getting yeah. used to the, 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 the live volume thing. Sorry, Andy, what are you going to say, mate? Sorry. No, no, I was just going to, yeah, no, sorry. Yeah. What was your first one? Was it Wings? My first one was Wings, yeah. Yeah. And that was, that was loud as well. Yeah. yeah. Just because I was young and it was such an overwhelming experience. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just like in this huge cavernous building and you're, <laughs> what, what is this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Trevor, never you're right. A, I'd never been in that, pl that place um, with that many people at once. Yes. You know? Yeah. All looking remember, the same way. Uh, all doing the same thing. Yeah, and they all know the songs yeah. and... It's been part of that group's quite weird when you're younger, isn't it? But I remember mm -hmm. uh, there's another chat we were having on the Facebook group about Rush, and I missed Rush at the Apollo. I never saw them there. Um, but in '81, I went to the gig at Ingolston, and that literally was in a cow barn. I mean, it was ridiculous. Um, and there must have been some they'll know, but it felt like there was six or seven thousand people there, and um, I was right at the front, and I got pulled out. It was only a wee boy, you know, and I got, I got, they started to play a uh, countdown. If you know, that's the one they have with the space shuttle taking off. And uh, it's a brilliant, really odd, you know, odd the, the, the sound is amazing uh, on the, on the track and live. They were just terrific. And yeah. um, the, the place surged because it was a cow, literally a cow barn. And the place surged forward and I was right at the front and the, the barrier came across my chest and I fainted. And uh, oh, the next yeah. thing I knew I was, I was in an oxygen tent looking up Geddy Lee's nose, which is quite a big nose, but I was in this oxygen tent and I was there with a guy called Graham Potter. Do you remember Graham Potter? I do, yes. And Graham, Graham was still behind the barrier shouting, oh, I can't say, but it began with a C. Yeah, silly. Yeah. And uh, so I, I got up, ran out of the oxygen tent, round the back and back at the back of the crew, the, the crowd and made my way to the front again. And I got pulled out again. This big burly bouncer pulled me out. They're a bit nicer <laughs> than the Apollo bouncers. <laughs> yeah. the, the Apollo bouncers usually hit you rather than... Uh, uh, so, yeah, it was quite... Uh, so we've got other folk here. What's this one? This is a good one. Um, see that? The yeah. ACD? Yeah. The song I think you might be talking about, it sounds like... like what is it Demon Fire? Aye. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a good one. Yeah. It really is good. Um, yeah. the, the, the funny thing with ACDC, I, I mean, don't want to make this the ACDC show, but a lot of folk are saying it's, that they're interested, but 
the weird thing I always think about them is some of the production in their albums is so bad. Like Flying the Wall, Flick of the Switch, and all those albums. Yeah. Well, the they did that themselves. I think they did that themselves. Well, you can tell. Yeah. You, know, you want somebody in, you, you you get somebody that knows what they're doing, like Mutt Lang, you know. But um, but that the production of the album is great, and I think that really helps, particularly with Brian's voice. He, he's not so good. Yeah. Um, I, well, I don't know if that's fair. He's better than me. But uh, I mean, <laughs> fuck it, tell us what. Yeah, he is better. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Who have we got here? Ian Bearson. Uh, yeah, low supported by Steve Gibbons band. Bloody hell! I bet that was good. Yeah. yeah. ELO are still a huge band, aren't they? Yep, they are. Still a good band. Is there, is there any of the um, original band members left apart from the front man in ELO? I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. But here's, okay. here's someone. Here's yep. someone here went. That's, sorry, sorry, folks. It's another ACDC. There's someone here went to see <laughs> Back in Black tour. Now that. Oh, I been a fantastic gig. Oh, I'd like to be yeah. at that. I would have loved to go to that. Yeah. I heard them um, Brian Johnson talking about that. You know that he does a show on Sky. Um, so I, he meets people and chats to them, like Dolly Parton and Robert Plant, and he's met loads of people. Oh, wow. People, and um, he said that he mentioned the Apollo a couple of times uh, on that show, and he said that the the crowd at the Apollo were terrifying. Until he walked on the stage and the noise was absolutely incredible and it really helped him get because he had pretty big shoes to fill. Uh, I think yeah. it meant quite a lot to him that gig, mate. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, never, got, nah, I never got to yeah. that one. Yeah. And uh, Trevor's saying, yeah, there's just Jeff Lynn left in the, the in, in yellow. I thought that was the case. What's this one? Alan B uh, Barker saying, I bumped into Ozzy and, and full band as they were coming out of the chip shop after the gig. <laughs> Or is there a secret back exit for bands? Well, I don't know. There was that. Oh, obviously, man. there was the stage. It, there was a wee, the, the wee back entrance at the... Was it called the lane? What was it called, Andy? I can't remember. So, Renfield Lane, wasn't it? So Renfield Lane. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe somebody will tell us. There could have been. Because, uh, I mean, I know inside, um, I was only in backstage once. I was backstage at uh, a Gillen gig. And I remember there were stairs going downstairs and there was there's all those commodity yeah. rooms downstairs. Yeah. But I don't know if there was another entrance or exit. If anybody knows, let us know, folks. Which chip shop would it be? The Mr. Chips or the burger at the back? Oh, you know too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the burgers, a big burger sign on the side of it. Burger. <laughs> Any Wishbone Ash fans on? Well, I like Argus and I've seen... Uh, the the chap I've forgotten his name Ian is it the the guitar player who's still doing Wishbone Ash I interviewed him actually for the Apollo website and he was a lovely fella Renfrew Lane I, sorry yeah. I can't remember Renfrew. his name sorry. Renfrew Lane there you go um, and I remember um, I went to see Wishbone Ash I, I was working uh, for the NHS for a wee while in Glasgow at the the the, the, the Great Western and I went to a Wishbone Ash gig at the you know the boat the, the the I don't know if that venue's still there the boat on the river down in the Clyde and they were really Renfrew. good actually I really enjoyed it what's it called yeah. Renfrew Ferry ah right yeah I walked past it I walked past it about two months ago all ah, right okay okay yeah it didn't look yeah, Andy Powell that's right mate it didn't look operational then but yeah no I, I think they've had some problems I mean I don't, I don't suppose well, having a venue on a boat's a good idea is it so uh, yeah. In the middle of a pandemic, no, I was was it's not a great idea. No, <laughs> <laughs> the motors supporting. I don't remember. I remember the name, but I don't remember their music. Were they any good, mate? They were. I think. Uh, they were okay. Yeah. I had, well, I, I thought they were alright. Kind of new wave. Yeah. Were they? New were wave. They? Right. Ish. I'm not sure. We really need yeah. to do a a whole show about support bands. I think. Yeah. I think that would be and, really good. Yeah, I think there's probably some support bands that went on to be headliners, and the headliner was the support band. I think that's probably right. Yeah, I know this is quite controversial, but I thought Bon Jovi smashed Kiss completely off the stage. Uh, I, I'm not even—I don't even like Bon Jovi, but by God, they were good that night. Yeah, um, I think there's, I mean, a, there's a lot. 
recording of that kicking up on YouTube. Maybe Jack's oh, got. Oh, yeah. Really? All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, somebody's yeah. showing off here. Jackie. Look at that, Sandy. What? Airport? No. Yeah. She was at the Motley Hoople Queen gig. That was her first oh. gig. Jackie, that must have been amazing. <laughs> I was listening to the bootleg of the Queen uh, show that night today, actually. And um, actually, no, I'm not like Jack's told me I'm not allowed to call them bootlegs. They're called live recordings. Sorry, Jack. Um, and yeah, they sound, sounded absolutely amazing. I'd love to have been at it. And, and back in the day, Motley Hoople were brilliant as well. It must have been terrific. I was a bit, when that film came out, Bohemian Rhapsody film, it was quite a lot weird about that film, but um, they didn't really get into that that era, Queen, which I thought was a real shame because I, I, Queen worked bloody hard to get to where they got to in the early days, and that that was an amazing gig. I, I would love to have been at it, and uh, the, even the tickets were quite hard to get for a while. But there's a few about now. But they 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 unlike the I think the only one, one that's rarer than that was probably the Stones one, the concert one, Andy. Yeah, which we've, we've got that now, haven't we? But they were quite hard to get to. Well, here's somebody saying. Um, well, it was a sellout. Oh, I don't <laughs> so, yeah. Rare to buy. I thought don't yeah. want to give them away. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, that's them away. Uh, the motor's dancing the night away. Ah, right. Okay, I know that song. Um, it was amazing. I bet it was. I bet it was. Um, I would love to have been at that show. Um, who's this? Bandy Legs supporting Sabbath. I don't know what that is. Is that Van Halen? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've never heard of them. Never heard of them. I, I don't know. I think that's I think that's a mistake. <laughs> Come on, mate. Band of legs. Who's that? Mm. The, I the don't know that is. Anyway, come back to it. Anyway. What's yeah. this one? What's this? What's this? R O I O. What's that? George, what's that? George Price. What's that, Andy? Am I being stupid? Is this an acronym that I should know? It's something I should know probably too. <laughs> no. Come on, George, you need, you need to tell us what ROIO means. It's probably something obvious. I can feel a stupid moment coming on here. I have quite a few of those during the day. Ah, here we go. Oh, yeah. Recording. Ah, yeah, yeah, right. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Recordings of in, uh, indeterminate origin. Still bootlegs yeah. to me. Well, don't talk yeah. to Jack. Uh, at the Apollo boot, bit like uh, the Apollo boot, I did it again <laughs> at the Apollo live recordings page because he's 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 really keen, he doesn't want to call them bootlegs. So, yeah. uh, never heard that acronym before. There you go. Well, here we go. Here we go. Uh, this is from Trevor Band of Legs, but a brummy band that changed to Quartz. All right, I remember them and supported Sabbath again at the Apollo. Ah, I've heard the Quartz. Yeah. That's I've honestly never heard of them before. That's that's terrific. Well, if they change the name, maybe the, you know, Bandy Legs is not a good name. <laughs> yeah. Quartz is the much better. Uh, well, I'd love to have seen Sabbath a, at the Apollo. Hard, oh. yeah. Well, that that was amazing. There's a, that was quite a week this week, Andy. Yeah. Uh, there's quite yeah. a week. And amazing that folk uh, remember a lot of these gigs. Um, I hope I've not. See, this is all uh, going to be on the, the Facebook group, so you can have a look at this later on, guys, if you want to have a chat with people. Um, but it was uh, it was quite a week. Now, what we'd like to do uh, for future shows is uh, Andy and I are going to let you know. Hold on, uh, hold on Scott. Oh, yeah. There was, there was a Battle of the Bands on. I just realised this. There was a ba Battle of the Bands on in 1980, in no November in 1980. Do you think if any of the bands that played there, any members are on here, could they maybe get in touch? That might be good to get their opinion of how they went oh, down that would be and cool. how, they, how the Apollo was for them, you know? Are the band names? Any... Do we know the band names? No, nah, well, it just oh. is, I've just got a uh, battle of the bands. It was probably by, it was probably the uh, run by Unicorn. Ah, right, right. Probably, okay. Yeah, it's probably one of them. Okay. Just to fill up some space and get some seats, get yes. some cash, get some money. Yeah. In. Sorry, continue with what you were saying. I bet the bouncers were still at it, though, mate. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we we must do a whole show about the bouncers. I mean, I think that 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 that's pretty important. Anyway, well, thank you. That that that, that was great. Um, I think 
uh, if you don't mind, what we'd like to do for future shows is we're going to say, you know, it's going to be the bands that played next week that we're going to talk about on the next show and hopefully play some of their music. Um, and yeah. what we'd like to do is for folk to chat about it in the Facebook group. So Andy and I will put something on Facebook and we'll try and just to enrich, you know, enrich in the, 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 the commentary a wee bit and get some more, get us get into it a bit deeper and getting some pictures and some uh, actual memories about the shows would be great. So watch out in the Facebook group, guys, uh, and we'll see if we can we can uh, get the dialogue going. But that was pretty good. Thank you, guys, for, for getting it into yeah. that. That was brilliant. Right, the next thing we're going to do every week is we're going to talk about the building itself um, because it means so much to folk. And, um, I mean, some of the things that happened at the Glasgow Apollo and the Green, Greens Playhouse, uh, folk just don't believe. Um, like, there's one, uh, I don't even Andy knew this until I mentioned it to him uh, earlier on in the week. There used to be a golf course on the roof. Honestly, there was a pitch and putt uh, golf course on the roof of the Greens Playhouse. They really did try... <laughs> Um, yeah. There's a book. Uh, there's a book about the Greens Players because I I want you in, and um, it was uh, it's detailed in there. Can you believe it? There was a I mean, it was a big building, but I didn't think it was that big. I reckon mm. it must have been putting me. I don't think it was. A, I don't think it could have been a chip. You know, I, I can't Pitch. imagine that. Pitch yeah, and don't even be pitching putt. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> On Renfrew Street. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Brilliant. Street. Yeah. But um, oh, here's so I need to go backwards one step because somebody's somebody's saying don't. Uh, uh, I'm being controversial here. My first gig was Spark. Sparks are actually quite popular, you know. Um, I'm not, yeah. I'm not secreting them, but there's there's an awful lot of folk really like them. There's quite a lot of prog fans like Sparks. Yeah, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I understand that. I, I mean, I don't know what their new music's like. I've not heard anything since they were in the charts. But um, yeah, it's um, <laughs> what 1970. Seven, exactly. Yeah, seven. I remember it's we sort of yeah. Hitler well, type. Thing. The only time this is this is a bit odd, but the only time I ever saw Sparks was I was working in a motorway service station at Castle Douglas, I think it is Castle Douglas, Douglas, and um, Sparks were there, right, getting getting their breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time I ever saw them, and you know they had the guy was. The guy with the moustache—I can't remember his name. He had the yeah. full, with the suit, the suit on, and the tie, and the little natty. He looked a very natty dresser, but for breakfast, I thought, oh, in the service station, that was pretty fun. That, yeah, we've got yeah. some sparks loving here, guys. Look, yeah, very underrated. Oh, sparks are brilliant. Yeah, good. Yeah. Guy's a good I'm, singer. Yeah. I'm going to have to go and I'm going to have to go and listen to them because I, I I don't really know their music at all. I just know that. Uh, in another world, I'm a bit of a Marillion fan, and uh, there's quite a lot of Marillion mm. fans really like Sparks. Um, right. I don't know why. Uh, Ron, Ron, and Russell Mayall. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we got someone in from Matanuga. Wow, Jimmy, welcome. And uh, Jimmy's mentioning something here. He said he was part of the the Apollo Choir that was uh, recording the River Sessions for the Nazareth show in '81. Wow. I used to love Dan. I thought he was a brilliant singer. Brilliant singer. But that was a good gig. Uh, yeah. I never saw them at the Apollo. I saw them at the Playhouse in Edinburgh. But uh, so here we go. Who's this? It took me years to work out that Sparks were brother. Were I didn't know that either. Gosh. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Let's say uh, um, people like talking about bands. Yeah. What? Back to the Apollo. Back to the Apollo. <laughs> so what? There was pitching pots one thing. Um, but the other thing that um, I was certainly aware of when I was a kid was the the, the Apollo had nicknames. And uh, the one we used to call it, I don't know if you remember this, Andy, because we didn't always go in the same bus, did we, or the train. But mm. um, we used to call it the Appalling because it was kind of falling down when we were going to it. Because most of the time we went was in the 80s. We, we missed a lot of the really good stuff in the 70s. But So we called it the Appalling. I don't know if that's a general name for it. Is anybody else... I'm sure I saw somebody in the Facebook group calling it the Purple Palace. I definitely saw that, but has anyone else yeah. got a name that they called it? I know there were some really quite disparaging names were on the Facebook group recently. I can't even remember them, to be honest. But um, yeah. any other names you can think of for the Apollo? Because I'd quite like to get these get these documented because it's, uh, it's quite funny. But I tell you, I, I, I remember um, when they were knocking the place down, yeah. When I met this guy, 
and he had like long blonde hair. He had a, a Bruce Springsteen t-shirt on with the with the with the shoulders cut off, and he had a yeah. strap on his back, right? And he was standing like that. <clears throat> and at one point, when they were knocking the building down, you could see the you could see the the, the stalls and the the circle on the upper circle. And then back, the guy, honestly, guys, he was standing there and he was greeting. He was greeting. And he said, I always wanted to play on that effing stage. And I, and I went away. I went for a pint with our friend Nod. Yeah. And came back about two hours later and he was still standing there in tears. It's absolutely amazing. Wow. Uh, I just wonder what he called the place. I'd suspect, unlike Steve's idea, he didn't call it the shithole. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know it's it's funny because it was a shithole. That's fairly yeah, accurate. And and yeah. can can you imagine, right? I mean, that big horrible place that the SECC in Glasgow. You imagine if they had the same conditions in there as they had in the Apollo these days, it, would, oh. it wouldn't be, it wouldn't last for five minutes. People wouldn't put well, up with it. But yeah, <laughs> unsanitary for a start. Oh, horrible, yeah. But um, yeah. so the shithole. Yeah, I never called it that, but I can see why. Yeah. Um. But there was one uh, conversation on Facebook as well, and I didn't appreciate this, and it was somebody who had been in the Upper Circle. And yeah. we used to always buy Upper Circle tickets, but never went to the Upper Circle. We used to just smuggle everybody down into the stalls. We'll talk about that another week. But the, the, the folk that were on Facebook were saying that the, the roof was so damaged that the rain was coming through the roof, and they were getting wet at a gig, and it wasn't sweat. Mm. I mean, that's... I mean, you cannot imagine that now. They've been absolute... Stushy, wouldn't there if somebody did that? Yeah. So, see, I, I don't know what the. I remember recently someone put a, a side plan, a side elevation thing together yeah. on a, on a PDF or something. But I don't remember if there was anything above there like that. There's, there meant, wasn't there meant to be a a dance floor up the top there? That's well, clouds. That, yeah. And all that. Cloud, yeah, clouds yeah. was up there. So it must have been coming through that roof and then through there and then through another roof and then some floors. Yes. It must have been just not looked after. Nah, they just left it. I mean, I, I've heard there's, there's two stories there that are pretty good. There was there was one when the the guys from Talisman Films were making the, the documentary, which is on uh, YouTube, um, that they did with Alvin Stardust. They got run of the building. And I've seen loads of photographs. I, I, I've actually, uh, I, I must contact them and see if I can get hold of them for you guys because they're they're not publicly. There's some of them are in the public domain, but they've got they've got hundreds of photographs. And there's one uh, where you remember the the sign. I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of it, but it used to have like at Blackpool, you know, the bulbs, thousands of bulbs, and there's a there's a whole room, a massive room, and it's just full of bulbs, you know, and because. Uh, wow. When it became the Apollo, they changed it, uh, and there's a story behind that as well. And they took most of the bulbs down, so they had this huge stock of bulbs, um, which were up there. And it was, I mean, apparently it was amazing, um, but I was never ever there. Um, here's somebody saying, hey, Gloria, she met her husband at Clouds, brilliant! Oh. That's fantastic. Th th that was the other story, though, Gloria, because I, I, I live in England, I live in the Cotswolds, a place called Morton and Marsh, and I, I drink in a pub called the Black Bear. I, well, I used to drink in a pub called The Black Bear. Andy's been there a couple of times. And I was sitting in there one night a few years ago and I was watching the Scotland game on my, my phone because they didn't have it on the telly because it must have been a big game. Like Oxford must have been playing St. Peter's or something, you know. And so they didn't have the Scotland game on. And this guy came up to me and he said, oh, can I sit with you? There's another Scottish guy. Turns out this guy was from Glasgow and his name's Billy. And it, I don't know if you're on Billy, but uh, Billy's a big punk fan. And he's a wee bit older than me, but he was a very serious punk fan. And he absolutely loves Clouds. And was it what was it called before Clouds? Was it Satellite City? Satellite City, yeah. yeah. And he goes on and on about Peter and the Test Tube brothers and all these other bands. So I think it's uh I think we need to do a show about that, Andy. I think that's one we need to do a show on because it's uh yeah. God glorious saying yeah. it married 45 <laughs> years next month. Well done, Mike. Congratulations. Gloria. That's amazing. <laughs> what was the gig, Gloria? Tell us what the gig was. Was it just a dance or was it was it a gig? I remember Tiger Tim used to play up there as well. Do you remember him? 
Yeah, I remember him, but yeah. yeah. He was he, yeah. and we had a guy on last week who was another DJ who used to play there, um, who's now got his own uh, online radio show. So that's fact. What was the show, Gloria? Tell us what it was. And uh, while we're doing that, um, yeah. all right, I saw the picture of the design. Yeah, I saw Focus at Clouds and Stone the Crows. Bloody hell, I'd love to have seen her. What a woman yeah. she was. Oh, <laughs> Gloria. <laughs> It, folks, it was uh, the Glitter Band. <laughs> that was before that big numpty was a singer. Um, yeah, is that George? Uh, is that George replying to Tiger Tim used to play? It looks like it is actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I did see Tiger Tim in there. Yeah, came in with two bouncers. Did he? Tim, his own personal security. <laughs> <laughs> he was on Radio Clyde as well, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was. I remember him on Radio Clyde. Yeah. Quite a small guy, but he had two big vouchers. I'm not going to say. Alive? I think so. Because I, so. I remember he did a book, I think, a while back. He was, um, he's a bit. He he was a bit ill, I think. Yeah. I'm yeah. having a Barney here. Let's not have a Barney now. Now come on, the Glitter Band wasn't Gary Glitter. The Glitter Band were pretty good. Yeah. Actually, so was Gary Glitter. Pisses me off. I remember seeing him at. Uh, where was it? Milton Keynes one year. I think it was with Quo or something. And he was absolutely brilliant. And it's just yeah. like such a nightmare. Um, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it was our shithole. I think that's right. Yeah. Do, do you think? I mean, I, I mean, my, my, my son, my eldest son is 22 now. He's 22, Andy. Can you believe that? Yeah. And um, he's big into music. How could he not be? Um living in this house but um he has the same sort of love affair with gigs in sheffield that we had in glasgow because right. I, I used to think it was us but i don't know if it was maybe i'm talking crap tell me if i'm sure you will well i know you will but uh mm. he, he he always says you know it's it, it, i can't even tell you the name of the what's it called the sheffield place but he loves it and he raves about it and they do the yeah. same thing we used to do. They go in and they, they, they get tickets for free from various places and try to smuggle each other in. So I hope that is still the case, to be honest. I I, I, I think it's yeah. uh, pretty cool. But it was our shithole. Uh, you're absolutely yeah. right. It was our shithole. It was our so shithole. Maybe, maybe the worse the place is, the, bit, the fonder you look upon it because you survived it. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. There was because, I mean, it's a bit like, I mean, some of the, the other, I mean, most of the gigs I've been to were, you know, Glasgow and Edinburgh, then Manchester, then London, uh, in that order, because I've moved, yeah. gradually moved south. And even gigs like, I mean, the Manchester Apollo is a brilliant venue, but it's not the same as Glasgow Apollo, because it's 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 neat, it's tidy, it's in good condition. And it's the same with the Hammersmith Odeon. I don't even know, I think it's called the Apollo now, actually, the Hammersmith, I think it's the Hammersmith Apollo. Yeah. Um, Great venue, you know, full of folk, but there's it's not got the same atmosphere. Um, but that might just be me, um, because of you know, well, my age. it doesn't have its own atmosphere, <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, that's right, it's, it's clinical. Here's one coming in. Uh, Does anyone remember I, Thin Lizzie's last Apollo gig? We were there, um, yeah. I think, yeah. think from memory, did about six or seven encores. Phil didn't want to leave the stage, finished well late. And I missed the train. <laughs> that, 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 is, that that those two gigs are on YouTube. I just looked at them last night, so they're both on YouTube. Yeah, recordings, not not video. No, just recording. Sorry, yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember crying at that gig. Why? Someone take your ice cream. <laughs> no, it was it was when he was doing the. You probably remember this, Alan. Um, you know, he had, he had the mirror base and he was shining it into the crowd. It was like a beam of, like a laser going into the crowd. Yeah. And they were doing that, I've got to give it up, you know, that song about drugs. Yeah. And I think I was a bit young and daft and I'd just been to a, a thing. At, I was involved in this sort of discussion group back in, in Kerlouk where we lived. And we'd had this guy from Dundee who was a recovering heroin addict and he was a mess. And then he played that, so they played that song that night and it just took me right back and I, I felt so much empathy for that guy that night. And I remember greeting, I was there with a guy called Ian Steele. Remember Ian Steele, Steely? 
Yes. Um, I was behind you. Were you, were, you were standing beside you. me, mate. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I was just going to say <laughs> that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember him shining that that light into the crowd, singing that song, yeah. and I was in tears. I, I thought it was a brilliant yeah. gig. Absolutely yeah. brilliant gig. Well, for for me, the the I know it's not their most famous song, but um, oh, it just fell out of my head there. Oh, I can't remember it now, but um, oh, I'll remember it in a minute. But they they did the song, and I was Angel. Oh, I've forgotten the name of it, but it's a fantastic song, and I, I was waiting. On the whole gig to see if they would play it. Yeah. yeah. Angel of Mercy. Angel of Mercy. Oh yeah. No, Angel not Angel of Mercy. Death. Angel of Death. Angel of Death. Yeah. I, I, I think it is. And, uh, Angel of Death. It's like Nostradamus. I remember yeah. they they played it on the TV the week before, or was it a couple of weeks before they were doing a gig on the TV, Thunder and Lightning gig tour. I remember and, uh, that. I they remember they that. played it on there, and I thought, right, cool, they're going to play this song, so. That was my yeah. favourite song of theirs at the time. Great know. song. I mean, I liked all the rest of like Boys Are Back in Town, and, but that, yeah. at the time, that was my favourite. Yes. I mean, I, I think that, that last album with John Sykes on guitar yeah. uh, with, with Scott, I thought it was brilliant, and it was underrated at the time. And uh, We actually didn't, we, we saw them, when, well, we saw him when he was in 19, just near when he died, actually, didn't we? At the Heathery, I wasn't there, I saw him in Edinburgh, because you guys That's went to see him Grand Slam, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah. we got t- we've actually got tickets signed by him, and I think he died about just a few days later, didn't he? Uh, oh, maybe some months. man. Yeah, some yeah. Man. But I, I remember be in the in the Hillary, I was standing yeah. at the bar, and Phil Lennett was standing beside me, and he's a big he was a big guy, or I just he gave the impression of being a big guy, and I couldn't speak to him because I was just so. Overawed by 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 him <laughs> just being there, just being in the same room as him. If he'd seen you, he'd, be, he'd have felt the same way, mate. He'd have felt yeah, the same yeah. way. Well, he yeah. saw me about two. He'd seen me about twenty minutes before standing up the front, right in front of him, going, "Oh, it's full <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few. There's there, there's actually loads coming in here, mate. This is this is we're going to have to get back to some of these on the website. Uh, Robert yeah. Pratt saying. If you go to the Talisman Films Scotland website, you'll see a selection of pictures taken at the Apollo. Uh, we are selling the DVD, DVD and unsold tickets on eBay from Robert. Hi, Robert. Yeah, um, I, I, I had the great, great pleasure of being actually on that film, being interviewed on that film. Um, that was brilliant, making that. Um, and, I, and I think Talisman did a brilliant job. Um, and you know the best thing about Talisman? Um, they, they got Claire Grogan to, to do the... Um, the, the, to do the the, sort of the voiceover, and um, she was really good. But what they didn't do is they didn't edit it very much. Well, they did edit it, of course they did. But it's a really long documentary, so people just get to talk and, and tell the, the the real story. So it, I think it's a great DVD. So if you've never seen it, folks, um, get a, get a copy of it from the Talisman guys. They're a really nice bunch of guys as well, and they deserve it. Yeah. And um, they, they, they did loads for us uh, on the website and they gave us stuff and, you know, it was an absolute honour to be part of it. So thanks, mate. Uh, thanks very much for that. Um, and I, as I say, I highly recommend it. If you've not got that that DVD, well, I would say that, but I think it's brilliant. Sun goes down. I think that's what it was. Was that? All right, okay. That's yeah. a different song. That's the one I was talking about. No. Maybe it's the lyrics I'm thinking about, dude. Yeah, That yeah. must be the lyrics I'm thinking about, mm-hmm. yeah. Or I'm just talking crap again. It's quite possible. I remember Liz okay. Harvey, the Stone the Crows guitarist, got electrocuted on stage in Swansea. Yeah, uh, never knew he was Alex Harvey's brother. Yeah, I'd heard that before. Um, very sad. And I, I, I don't think I don't know if that was the end of the of of Maggie Bell as a like a pop star, if you like. But that woman's voice is just unbelievable. Um, I think she's mega mega underrated. Um, but like John Bonham's uh, sister. Um, worst moment of my life was when I wrote to Jim will fix it please Jim can you fix it for me to meet Gary Glitter oh god thing is there was a lot of us in that sort of this is Trevor <laughs> I mean, you could to make that up <laughs> I think he's made that up mate I think he's made it up I don't know I don't know you, you can't I'm not making any assumptions dude I'm not making any assumptions um, yeah. if you've made that up it's, a, it's, a, it's quite good I quite like it but yeah. um I, I'm I'm going to go through these because there's so many things. Does anyone remember? I hope we didn't, no, ask, no, no. <laughs> hope he didn't ask for style. 
oh, stylophone lessons from Rolf Harris. Yeah. Angel from the coast. What's that? I think that's a maybe band? a Thin Lizzy. No, Is maybe it? it's a Thin Lizzy song. I don't know that. Cold yeah. Sweat. Yeah, Cold Sweat's a yeah, brilliant song. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Uh, thank you. Uh, Tiger Tim is very much alive and well. Struggles with MS, um, but still causing havoc. Brilliant. That's good to good. know. Uh, if you know him, say hi from us, because uh, he was definitely a big part of our lives growing up, wasn't he, mate? I mean, he was quite, yeah. certainly when we were kids, he was he was all over our hometown. Um, so thank you very much for that. Say hi to him for me. Right. So we're, we're rapidly getting out of time here. I better just, whoops. Hold on. I've just got a signal from facebook thing so i'm just making sure the the, the stream is going because we've had such a dodgy day with with technology uh here's someone else uh who saw and slam uh, at tam do in ban burn brilliant van came out after the gig then as well brilliant phil was last out and didn't it's moved off the screen and didn't look great i was totally starstruck too yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. i'd be the same if i met him um because i actually i Oh God, I'm talking about me greeting a lot. I, I was in I was in Dublin on business. I was it was ages ago, and um, they were having one of the the Phil Linnet a uh, tribute at, uh, gigs by another uh, Gary Moore, and uh, I went along to that, and it was when they were unveiling the statue. And oh God, what a state I was in, because it's one of these these guys that you. Uh, he was just so important to us when we were growing up, wasn't he? Yeah. He was an absolute yeah. dude. Um, absolute dude. And uh, there's one more from Trevor here. Trevor, with the Apollo shutting in 85, it was long before the spectacular stage shows we have now. What were the biggest you saw at gigs at the Apollo? Mines were Saxon, and the Eagle, brilliant, yeah. With the aircraft landing lights, motorhead bomber, brilliant at that, and, and Rainbow. Uh, I saw Rainbow at the, the playhouse with the eye, you know, the, with the, the eyes going across the crowd. But the biggest show for me was, it's a bit of a obvious one, it was Kiss. Um, and probably ECDC, actually. They had quite a big show even back then. Yeah, on yeah. the Those About to Rock tour, it was a pretty big show. Um, I can't think Cannon, of anybody else. Bells. Yeah. Hmm. Do you remember when those cannons went off? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. mad. Well, Matt, I, think Matt, was, I was telling you that. Yeah. I was telling you that I remember. I, I was just standing... I remember just stopping and standing going, what is this? <laughs> when ACDC were playing, what is this? Like, this is mad. There's cannons, there's bells, you know. It was amazing. Yeah. On on the, well, on, the <clears throat> on the bootleg of that ACDC for those about to rock tour, um, I keep calling it bootleg Jack. I'm sorry. I'll get it out of my brain. Uh, R-O-I-O. On the um, <laughs> yes, yeah. that's too much for me to remember, mate. Um, but on the bootleg, I think I said this last week. Um, when I first heard live that, that, that live, live recording, record. I put it on. Look at me, I'm doing this as if it's a record. Look, <laughs> yeah. I put it on, and it's that it's a recording of the bell at the song Hell's Bells, and it's like dying, dying. And I read the crowd's going apoplectic. And I remember getting whooshed back to that moment, I could smell it. It was that sort of somebody said earlier it all spelled patchouli and marijuana. But then Brian came out and it was actually quite funny because when he hit the bell, it went ding. <laughs> so it's this sort of dong, dong, then ding, ding. Everybody was screaming and roaring. It was absolutely amazing. Um I think that's probably one of the biggest shows I ever saw at the Apollo. Yeah. The bomber, uh, Motorhead's bomber was that oh, was amazing. That was Saxon's thing. They're still using that, I think. Um yeah. But, well, uh, I saw them. I saw, I saw Saxon. Me and Nod went down to Motherwell Civic Centre. I saw Saxon there. Did you? The Civic Centre. They, they had. They had the. I'm pretty sure they had the. The, the bomber lights and everything in there, but it was tiny. Oh, they only had a little bit of it. I'm not sure. It seems it was a while ago, but I was yes. like, wow. They were really. They were really good too. But yeah, I would have liked to seen them in the Apollo. They um. Big Biff is doing a, well, was doing a speaking tour just before COVID came in. Yeah. And he's a bit of a character, actually. He's quite a smart guy, you know. Uh, oh, quite yeah. an interesting guy, yeah. So I hope he I hope he resurrects that because it was quite funny, though, when he brought his solo album out, I, thought, I, I listened to it on Amazon, and I thought, 
I wonder if it's anything different to Saxon. No. <laughs> it's just the same. <laughs> well, it's a... well, they've just, they've just, um, I think they have just released an album of cover versions. Have they? You know, oh, that's what, that Christmas albums yeah. is often the end, mate. You know, when bands do cover version albums and Christmas albums. Uh, no. When we started tonight, we started, no. we started tonight talking about Leonard Skinner. They they produced an abominable. Oh, I'm in I'm in form tonight, mate. I'm getting quite grumpy. Um, but they 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 produced a Christmas album. Jesus wept. It's right. appalling. God, it's appalling. Um, I don't know. So what did Saxon have on theirs? Was it? I thought I haven't looked at it yet. It's but songs or something, was it? Oh, no, it's like it's, it's like songs that influenced them. Ah, right. Oh, that might be not so bad. Because yeah, that, I'm, yeah, I'm biased, but the only one I really like is um. Rush when they did their cover versions album that was brilliant, um, but I would say that. Oh, I'm, yeah. But I'm, okay, I, know, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know. All right, all right, all right, right. So okay all right, right. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. it, hey, Rush could sing the phone book for me, mate. Uh, yeah. And just watch the comments come in. Didn't like his voice. He sounded like he sounded like a drowned rat. Yeah, right. Okay, right. Anyway, um, so guys, we've we'll run over time. Brilliant. Uh, I Leo, think that's magic. Yeah. Um, we, could, we, could, we could go on all night again, I think. We haven't even shown any videos. We haven't played any music. Um, and we've still run over time. So absolutely brilliant. Um, what, we, what we're going to do next was I was going to show you a film. But we'll keep that for next week. I am going to create Mary Hell with this lot and, and make sure I get it working next week because it's not on. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll be on. We're on six platforms right now, right? We're on, we're on Facebook twice. We're on Twitter, we're on Twitch, we're on YouTube, uh, and various. There's another one as well. For sure. I've forgotten, but we're on six platforms. Absolutely amazing, um, and people are coming in from all over the world, which is amazing. So thank you very, very much. So hopefully next week we'll get that we'll get that to work. Um, just like to uh, finish uh, by reminding you that you know because people have asked us, we're going to do this next week. Um, we're going to have a Zoom thing at the end, sort of after show party, if you like. Um, and, and again, we'll run it, but it's not. It's for everybody to have a chat. It's not. It's not for us to keep talking. It's for everybody to talk to each other and um, enjoy that. I'm, I'm I'm learning about Zoom at the moment um, to to make sure we can do it. Um, and I know we can do rooms, so we can have groups talking about different bands or whatever. We just need to, I want us to do it organically, but I'm I'm actually quite excited about it because I know folk are annoyed and bored and you know could do with could be doing with us. So. I mean, Andy and I have been doing quite a lot of meetups with our friends who we were having a drink. We've been on for three or four hours. So, but if folk wanted to come on and do it, we've made the investment. We'd be absolutely delighted if, if folk wanted to do that. So, I hope you've enjoyed. I've loved that tonight. It's great. I don't know how you feel, yeah. Andy, but you good. Getting into the getting into the detail a bit and talking about you know people's experiences um, is just magic. And I'm so touched by the the feedback and the comments. Even you, you hater. I've got one hater, right? Uh, even you, we love you as well. Um, but uh, but thank you very much. Um, I'm really sorry we couldn't play the music. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it was because I, we'll use it another time. We've got folks saying goodbye here, Andy, from everywhere. Lincolnshire, great show. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, that's really, really cool. And there's someone saying goodnight from, from Stockholm. Uh, that's just out of this world. Uh, we get about the Apollo Choir, don't we? <laughs> so anyway, goodnight from me. Good night, mate. Oh, best. and it's and, good uh, for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to go and get another pint of Guinness, mate. Uh, so uh, see you later, mm -hmm. folks. All the best. See you soon. All right. Cheers now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.